Without a doubt, one of the most popular chord progressions in popular music is the 1-5-6-4 chord progression. There's literally hundreds of songs that use this chord progression as a basic template. So it stands to reason that we should learn how to recognize this chord progression and to be able to solo over these chords in any key. Here's a couple of examples of 1-5-6-4 chord progressions in a couple of different keys. So we have chord 1-5 6 and 4. In the key of C, the chord progression would be C, G, A minor, F. In the key of G, it would be G, D, E minor, C. In the key of D, it would be D, A, B minor, G. Our next step is to delve a little bit deeper to get a better understanding as to why this chord progression is so popular and have a look at a couple of different ways of remembering the chord progression in each key. I'm going to begin our discussion of this progression in the key of C and then once we get used to how the chord sequence works we'll move to a variety of other keys. So let's begin with a typical three chord song in the key of C. Now generally speaking if we're talking about a three chord song and using the circle of fifths here to give us a visual representation of which chords we would find in the key, uh, basically if it was a three chord song we'd have the main chord, chord one, in the middle, in this case it's key of C, and we'd have potentially the other two chords, our other two choices for chords in a three chord song would be situated either side of the root chord. So this is a great way to remember which three chords we're likely to encounter in a three chord song. So we'd have chord one in the middle, chord five, the G chord, so if it was a two chord song it would most likely be these two chords and if it was a three chord song we'd also include this chord here. So potentially that's our three chord song. The next step in understanding why certain four chord progressions are more popular than others is to discover which new chord are we going to add into our standard three chord songs to make it a strong four chord progression. And the answer is actually very simple. If we take chord one, the new chord that we're going to add into our standard three chord songs is the relative minor to chord one. In other words, we're wanting to find a chord that represents the exact opposite. So what we're looking for here is a chord that is a strong contrast to chord one. In fact, we're looking for the psychological opposite, if you like. If we were to think, say, for example, of the chord one, the C chord, as being bright in sound, uh, we would be thinking of the relative minor as being, say, dark. So how you work out the relative minor is if you're moving in a clockwise direction the relative minor is at 90 degrees to your key chord and in this case we're working in the key of C then we move around in a clockwise direction and at a 90 degree angle we have the relative minor so the relative minor to the key of C is A minor Let's do a few more examples just so you can see this in action. Here's an example showing how to work out the relative minor for G chord. So here's our key, G, moving clockwise and at a 90 degree 
angle to the G chord we have E so the relative minor to G chord is E minor let's try another example this time I'm working in the key of E flat and I want to find out the relative minor so I'm moving clockwise and at a 90 degree angle I have the relative minor which in this case is C minor so the relative minor for E flat is C minor and now this is where it all comes together for us on the circle diagram that you have in front of you on the screen we have the relationship between major and minor so we have the major keys on the outside of our circle and we have the relative minor on the inside of the circle so at a glance you'll be able to see the relative minor chord that goes with C major is A minor the relative minor for G major is E minor uh, for example the relative minor for E major is C sharp minor now that we have our reference chart let's see what our 1, 5, 6, 4 chord progression looks like so I'm going to begin on C and I'm thinking of this whole process as if I'm like on a train and I'm travelling to the second station which my next stop would be G chord and I'm coming back to the relative minor and I'm travelling over to the F chord and then of course we'd start again back on C so it's sort of creating a strange little diamond shape now the really neat thing is that no matter which point I start at around the circle that design will be exactly the same uh, let's do a couple more just so you can see okay I'm going to work out that progression the 1, 5, 6, 4 chord progression in the key of A so I'm going to colour it in blue this time I'm beginning at A traveling to my first stop which is E it's my first station I'm stopping at coming back creating the same design as I did before I'm now at the relative minor which is F sharp minor and moving over to D and arriving back home on the A chord let's do one more this time in the key of A flat so I'm starting on A flat traveling to E flat it's my first stop second stop is to the relative minor F minor then over to D flat and then finally arriving back on A flat the significance of these diagrams is that once you can identify the 1, 5, 6, 4 chord progression you'll know what scales to play over the chord progression and how you do that is the first point where you started in this case here C, G, A minor and F you could play a C major pentatonic scale or a C major scale if you're a person who thinks in terms of modes it would be a C Ionian mode down here if we encountered A, E, F sharp minor and D we could play A major pentatonic, an A major scale or an A Ionian mode